This is 7 News, the voice of the Riverina. Tonight, shoulder to shoulder with the message that enough is enough. Thousands of people about to descend on Young for its party of the year. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news hour, the driver in that horror crash that killed five teens sentenced to 12 years behind bars and brought a force on high alert the blunt warning to deter boats. 7 News begins now. Good evening. Domestic violence is a scourge on our region with police reporting incidents every single day. Dozens of anti-violence advocates took to the streets this morning, marching for victims. Sadly, Wagga has a recorded violence rate 30% higher for the state average. One local used today to highlight the death of a woman in an act of violence. Shoulder to shoulder, walking in solidarity for the one in four women and one in eight men who fall victim to domestic violence. I think it's just to reinforce to people that it's not something that you need to hide. It's something that you can speak to people about. It's something that you don't have to put up with. It's not normal in a relationship. Local police, members of the Rotary Club and a number of DV support groups joined forces this morning. The aim to increase conversation and education around the vicious scourge that impacts so many families. I think for us to get a lot more vocal and a lot less passive would be important. Riverina police are at the forefront, particularly in Wagga, which has a recorded violence rate 30% higher than the state average. Every day multiple times every day. Children who grow up with domestic violence think that's the norm and until you actually can educate them that it's not normal um, and it's not the usual behaviour that's expected of people, um, it's it, it just it just perpetuates. Justice for Melody, a notable sign amongst the marchers. Nola Mullen was advocating for Filipino transgender woman Melody Bruno who was killed in a violent sex act in 2019. She was transgender, so it does include not only women but also men and all types of people. Victims deserve the same treatment regardless of who they are. Painted stones were handed out representing victims and support services in the DV sector. We're aware that intimate partner violence in whatever form uh, is, is happening in, in numbers that we don't know. It's all part of the 16 days of activism, which will continue through until December 10. Samantha Coston, 7 News. And if you or anyone you know needs support, you can contact 1800 RESPECT. That's 1800 737 732. A former Murrumbidgee local health district nurse has been reprimanded by the Health Care Complaints Commission after she illegally accessed patient records while working at Wagga Base Hospital. Let's go to Samantha Costa now for more on this. And Sam, what impact will this have? Maddie, Emily McCallum illegally accessed the medical records of nine patients, including her own, during October 2020 and June 2021. Her registration was cancelled at the time and the HCCC has found her guilty of professional misconduct. McCallum says she accessed the records in the midst of an interpersonal conflict. She says two of the patients were sending her threatening and intimidating messages on social media at the time. Now, McCallum does have permission to re-register as a nurse, but the HCCC has imposed some very strict conditions on her application. Thanks for the update, Sam. That's Samantha Coston reporting there for us tonight. Wagga's Catholic Diocese has been forced to pay even more money to a victim of sexual abuse from the 1970s. The damages payout has now raised to $4.2 million after the Catholic Church failed in its appeal of a jury verdict. The victim was originally awarded a total of $3.4 million for both economic loss and past pain and suffering. He was the victim of convicted pedophile priest Vincent Kiss. The Supreme Court has rejected the appeal and ordered the church to pay interest on both payouts. The fallout from the removal of barriers to water buybacks has continued as farmers fear for the worst. But local politicians have assured the community the fight is far from over. In the moments after the Restoring Our Rivers Bill passed the Senate, the Federal Water Minister said it was one of the biggest things any government has done for the environment in a decade. But today, local irrigators say it's all for the wrong reasons. It's one of the most devastating pieces of legislation that will ever be passed and the impacts that it will have on our rural communities. It's, it's just devastating. That sentiment is shared by local politicians. They're playing parliamentary tricks 
And these tricks really would destroy New South Wales. And the people who've voted for this have probably never actually even met a farmer, let alone ever seen an irrigation channel. Irrigation communities are now furious and fearful for what's to come. We've just, our community has been thrown under the bus yet again, and I do not for the life of me understand how they are going to replace the economic loss to our community because we're going to lose irrigation. Not only for them, but the broader community, as the buybacks take water away from farmers and into waterways. We're all well aware of the cost of living um, crisis. This is only going to contribute contribute to it. We, we we're not going to have um, the fresh food that we had if we don't have irrigation. The member for Murray is now planning her course of attack. I will just continue the pressure and um, uh, we, we won't be back in Parliament till February. That'll give me time to get my new bill up. I'm already working on it. Minister Declaring game on to the government ahead of next year's return. It's going to be very difficult for the government to um, ignore this and they know that I, I'm relentless. Emily Francis, 7 News. Riverina firefighters have discovered new capabilities for drones during emergencies. At a recent grain silo blaze in Leeton, the technology looked through the roof hatch to determine whether the response was indeed working. Fire and Rescue New South Wales say the discovery has the potential to speed up the emergency response times. They realised upon putting it up that uh, it had a hatch open on, on the roof, which was really handy information. Uh, it really assisted our crews on the ground to, uh, to formulate a plan to deal with that silo fire. The Leeton crew is now preparing to share their findings with firefighters right across the country. Harness Racing's Carnival of Cups is in full swing in Young tonight. The free event for the whole family headlines Aussie Band, The Living End, plus a lineup of other acts and races into the evening too. The cherry on top for Young's most important weekend of the year. Carnival of Cups has come to Young. We're super excited about it at Harness Racing New South Wales. Uh, we're wrapping some of the most iconic Australian bands around our racing product. The festival organisers were out all day setting up the event, expected to see thousands come through the gate. We'll have the feature race, the, the Cherry City Cup, and then you're going to see the Living End, a full rock show, lights, big sound, you name it. They're going to play all the hits. Uh, going to be one of the more memorable events this town's ever seen. The Living End will be playing right here on this stage tonight after the last race, kicking off what's set to be a huge weekend for the town of Young. People have come from all over for the big gig, adding extra atmosphere to the Hilltops region. The hype and the buzz around the town, yeah, you can really feel it. Uh, while we've been here for a few days setting up, you can really tell the, the energy in the town and the excitement for it. Not to mention the economic boost to the town. Anything that comes to our regional areas is fantastic. We always do have the harness racing event here, but this year they're making it bigger and better. Um, they've got bands out there, a lot of entertainment. So it'll be another add-on to the Cherry Festival, which I think is fantastic for the region. Races will continue into the evening, featuring local drivers. It's going to be the biggest crowd I've ever driven in front of, so it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Gates closed to the free event at 7.30. Jacinta Cunahan, 7 News. Hundreds of motorbikes will be revving through the streets of Wagga tomorrow as part of the annual Christmas toy run, kicking off at Jubilee Park at 9am with riders doing a massive loop right around the city. Riders are accepting donations of unopened toys and cash with proceeds donated to the Salvation Army and Vinnies. All contributions made to the toy run will stay in the local area and provide presents for local kids. Well, Danny joins us now for a look at today's weather. And Danny, we did see a little bit of sunshine around the place today. We did, guys. A bit of a break in the clouds. Hi, everyone. Great to be with you. As we saw, we did see a bit of a break in that cloud cover around this morning after all those recent showers. Not a drop of rain across the Riverina for our first day of summer. Temperatures remained in the mid to high 20s, though 27 degrees in West Wyalong, a top of 26 degrees in Grenfell and Cootamundra saw a top of 25 with just 12 degrees overnight. We did stick to those low teens uh, as our minimums through much of the region. Not too much wind either, barely 10 kilometres from the southwest. Now, there is some very warm weather ahead. In fact, one of you is set to get to 38 degrees next week. I'll have those details a little later, guys. Thanks, Danny. We'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Still to come in seven years, a charity fishing event to honour a Wagga teenager. And Wagga's disability community comes together for a day of celebration.
And a little later on this news hour, reactions from the families of five teenagers killed in that high-speed crash as the driver learns his fate. The dire warning to people smugglers after an influx of asylum seekers and swim safety at the forefront after an alarming increase in adult drownings. Welcome back. A charity event honouring a Wagga teenager has proved to be a hit. Fishing for Kyan saw over 400 participants and spectators line the shores of Lake Albert on Sunday. 167 fish were caught in the competition, including an 85 centimetre carp. The charity was set up after the tragic passing of Wagga High School student Kyan Armstrong, who died suddenly last year. Absolutely loved his fishing, whether it was with his father and mother or um, out with his mates, he'd do it every opportunity that, that he had. The money raised goes to supporting research into brain aneurysms. The region's disability community has come together for a celebration like no other. In a Wagga first, support services and the local council have gathered to mark the International Day of People with a Disability. After years of separate events, Wagga's disability community has come together as one for a day of celebration. New Directions and Murrumbidgee oh, yeah, Local yeah, Health yeah. District were running some events and um, Ardas ran a lovely dance party that's always sold out but we thought we might actually come together as a community and make one big community focused event. Those organisations today joining nearly 20 more at the Riverside Precinct. So we can share what is actually available to the community in an effort to break down barriers and establish new connections. People with disability unfortunately feel isolated at times. This is a chance for them to get out into their community, use a wonderful community space, which is for them as well as anybody else, and celebrate their community. The inaugural event proved a major success with participants busting a move to mark the occasion. We were expecting 100 odd, but I think we've doubled that at the moment, so we're probably looking at 200 plus people here. Community consultation at the event will also go towards informing future strategies from Wagga City Council. We can also get people to come along and tell us what they think needs to be put in the next strategic plan for their accessibility in this community. Emily Francis, 7 News. Wagga City Library has an ambitious goal to beat its Christmas charity record of 77 hampers which it collected last year. The Library Food Appeal has been running since 2004 with many charities reaping the benefits of Wagga's generosity. Items can be donated at the Library from today. They're particularly calling for baby items, canned goods and products for women. We will be delivering things to um, our uh, organisations prior to Christmas as well as after Christmas. The proceeds will be going to three organisations this year, Care Van, the Tolland Community Centre and the Ashmont Community Resource Centre. Roads in the Hilltops Council area are expected to see repairs coming soon and it's all thanks to new funding. An extra $7 million will go towards repairing almost 3,000 kilometres of local and regional roads. The money has been secured under the government's Regional Emergency Road Repair Fund. Still to come in seven news, a familiar face steps up to steer Lake Albert into the second half of the Wagga cricket season. And turning up the heat, local basketballers prepare for a return to the court. Welcome back. Lake Albert legend Isaac Cooper will reprise his role as Bulls captain tomorrow. Hayden Pascoe has spent the past two weeks in the key position, but the former skipper has now been chosen to lead the club for the rest of the season. Lake Albert legend Isaac Cooper will shoulder extra responsibility against Wagga RSL tomorrow as he takes on the Bulls' captaincy for the first time this season. Hayden Pascoe has filled the role in recent weeks after Rob Nicol elected to step down as captain coach for personal reasons. Taken over the captaincy uh, this week for the rest of the season. Um, yeah, the club selected me from a few blokes to transition back into the role, which was probably the easiest for half a season. Cooper is far from daunted by the fresh challenge, describing the captaincy as an honour. I take a lot of notice in a lot of the cricket games, so it's, it's just an easy step back in, really. I watch all the balls, I watch everything, so it's um, something I'm happy to help the club uh, do and go forward with. So. The club is yet to name a replacement coach, but Cooper expects a handful of experienced players will share the load. It's been a team effort since Nichols' departure.
but Alex Tucker's put his hand up to sort of lead from the front um, during training, which has been good. The Bulls will be out to snap a two-game losing streak when they face the Bulldogs in the shorter format tomorrow. Lake Albert suffered its first one-day loss of the season against Wagga RSL in round three. I think we just need to execute with the ball up front. Um, new ball wickets are been a bit hard to come by lately, so new ball wickets is the big key this weekend. The Bulls sit in fifth with three games to play before the Christmas break. Wagga City leads the standings with 20 points, ahead of South Wagga and Wagga RSL. It's very open at the moment. Um, there's been some good wins from all the clubs, really, but um, going forward, South Wagga's starting to hit their stride again. Um, as usual, uh, Wagga City have always been consistently um, good. The Cats face the Blues tomorrow. Steph Muir, 7 News. Turning to basketball now, and heat trials will get underway inside Wagga PCYC tomorrow. Coach Zach Maloney says the association elected to begin the trials later than usual to give local players a longer break from the court. There's a lot of guys that are, that are really committed and, and ready to go. Um, a lot of them we haven't been able to get away from the court. So at, as a coach, that's really good to see. Maloney expects to welcome back the majority of Heat's core group while also adding a few new faces. Trials will continue on Thursday from 6.30pm. After the tryouts, we'll select an extended squad. Um, we'll train throughout the rest of this year and then into, into January before probably naming the full squad um, start of February. The team could even have an import on its roster next year. The Murrumbidgee Turf Club will unveil its newest ambassadors during tomorrow's Christmas party race day. Four Wagga women and two local men are vying to become the 2024 face of the carnival. The two lucky winners will act as brand ambassadors for next year's Wagga Gold Cup Carnival. They'll feature on promotional material, play key roles during the two-day carnival and score invites to the MTC's 100 Club Gala event. The dinner was very successful. All of the um, entries spoke well, presented well, and now it's just down to the judging side, which we don't look at the votes until Saturday morning. The announcement will take place after race three. Wagga locals can brighten up their weekend by charging into a rainbow of colour at Lake Elbert on Sunday. The family colour run will cater to the young and young at heart, while honouring the memory of a much-loved local footballer. An explosion of pink. <laughs> For a worthy local cause. We have our first event this Sunday, um, which is a colour run, so one of my biggest things, I wanted to do something for the kids and the families. The fun-filled family event will bring a kaleidoscope of colours to Apex Park while raising funds for local not-for-profit. Good talk. Our funds have been recognised in two published peer-reviewed articles um, about bipolar and the research they're doing by the University of New South Wales. So it just goes to show people that this money is really helping. Good Talk honours the memory of much-loved Mara footballer Graham Reedy Reed, who lost his life to suicide after years of struggling with bipolar disorder. From humble beginnings, the empowering charity has grown and prospered. Just thought we were having a footy round. Fast forward like six, seven years, and now we are very fortunate enough to be involved involved in um, Wagga Takes Two, um, thanks to Felicity. Having lost some people very close to myself um, as well, I instantly felt a connection and thought, why not? The family colour run will be Felicity's first taste of life as a Thomas Brothers Wagga Takes Two celebrity. Celebrity is a very um, loose term for me. I'm definitely not a celebrity. But she knows how to have fun. I think the pink, yeah. that'll be a draw card. Yeah. Tickets are available online. But also we'll have uh, tickets available on the morning as well. Eyewear is essential and white t-shirts are encouraged. Head down to Apex Park at 9.30 on Sunday morning. Steph Muir, News. And if you or anyone you know needs help, you can contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. Up next in 7 News, Danny's back and she's got your weekend weather forecast. That's next.
Hello again. Time for another look at the weather picture. That low pressure system that's been generating all that rain in southern New South Wales is gradually starting to move away. Before that's gone for good, some troughs could trigger one last wave of showers across the state's east tomorrow. By Sunday, high pressure will keep most of New South Wales dry. Hot easterly winds around Monday, Tuesday. That should keep our skies clear well into the working week. Taking a look at that rainfall chart now, there is just a small amount of rain left on on the radar, around five millimetres for the Riverina spread out over the next eight days. Some of that should fall tomorrow in some very light isolated showers, soft westerly winds and a small chance of a thunderstorm in the afternoon. Temperatures in the mid-20s, 25 degrees for Lockhart, West Wyalong a top of 27 degrees and Cootamundra a top of 25. Showers should disappear by Sunday as those clouds start to separate. 27 degrees in Gundagai, a top of 27 for West Wyalong as well, 25 degrees in Young and single digits overnight while Adelong is getting to a top of 26 degrees. Then on Monday, the start of our working week, it's finally going to look like summer. Clear sunny skies and temperatures warming up 30 degrees in Narendra Griffith, a top of 30 degrees as well. Cootamundra 27 and 29 degrees and a partly cloudy day for Truman. Looking at the next seven days and from Tuesday onwards, there's really nothing but 30s on the radar. In fact, 35 degrees on Thursday, 38 in Wagga on Friday. According to the Bureau, that's about 18 degrees warmer than this time last year. So thank you, El Nino. Keeping around the mid-teens overnight, summer kicking into high gear to make up for that slow start to December, guys. I can't believe it's December. I know, it's hard to believe. <laughs> Where does it go? <laughs> Danny, thank you very much. And that's your local news for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can catch up at our website or, of course, at 7 Plus. Right now, Dan's got your national news. Enjoy your night and your weekend, and we'll see you on Monday at 6 o'clock.